It's been about a week since I filmed part one of this soft spine junk journal and to be honest, I have been procrastinating since then, not clear on how to embellish the pages. So today I'm just going to turn on the camera without much of a plan and we'll see what happens. This is a craft with me video, which for me is somewhere in between a tutorial and an uncut video. So if you enjoy hanging out with me while we craft together, this might just be the video for you. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. I really wish I was someone that enjoyed mass making. That would make making journals so much easier. But I'm just not, which is why journals take me quite a long time. Because I look at each page individually. <laughs> And of course that takes forever, but it is what it is. That seems to be my method of crafting. So I'm just going to accept that. So if you've missed part one, where we made the cover, the spine, and sewed in all of these papers, you can find that link down below in the description box. So let's do some decorating. I know I want a pocket here in the front and I want this to be lace. I have my little drawer here of lace. This is pretty much all I have except for the lace scrap jar that I have. And I think this one here actually has a pretty good width. This is one of my newest ones that I bought at a small flea market outside of Vienna. I think it's very, very pretty. And I have quite a lot of it. And I think it has a great size for making a pocket. Isn't that just beautiful? So let's cut a piece off here. Okay, let's glue that on with some textile glue. It doesn't have to be textile glue. But I love this glue so much. It's from Action. Always good to have some sort of a rag on hand to dab away excess glue. For years and years, I've just been working with kitchen towels, but I find not only is the rag more eco-friendly, I also enjoy working with it a lot more than kitchen towel. I really like this card right here. So this is from the Belle Epoque ATCs, and this I think would be beautiful in here, but it's not enough. I'd like to add a button here as well. And I have my, my button jar here. How about one from here? These were from my recent visit to the Netherlands where I went to this amazing second hand shop. This has some wire in it. Okay, that just flew across my room. <laughs> and then let's add some more lace underneath that. And for that, I have my scrap jar of lace, which always comes in handy. So let's find something in there. I want something that looks vintage. I mean, a lot of these are vintage. I'm not sure what I'm looking for. Oh, this might work. I think I want to stick with white or off-white. Oh, this is very vintage. Very cute. Maybe not for here. Oh, this is gorgeous. Maybe this is it.
Mm, needs more. More is more in this journal, I think. <laughs> and we want it looking tattered. Yes, I'm liking that. But we do also need to thread through that button. It would have been really cool if I would have not glued this down yet. So I could just sew the button right through this pocket as well. Yes, but that ship has sailed. <laughs> so we'll just sew these three together with this off-white thread and I have this beautiful needle book that my dear friend Honey made for me. Isn't it just adorable? I have shown this in another video last year, but I get questions about it from time to time. So I'll just give you another quick flip through. So what I did is to glue down some lace and glue some of the pages together so that I could stick some paper bobbins inside with some thread and I also added these that I had left over from another digital collage club project where I can also add some paper bobbins into here also I stitched these so I could fit this in so it's a super cute needle and thread booklet I need a large eye for this thread let's try this one So we need to decide, do we want the thread in front or in back? I mean, the ends, I think I want it in front this time. So I'll go in the front. And I'll do that twice. And now I'll just tie them off in the front and leave the ends hanging. And then we can just snip those off. By the way, I love these scissors for thread so, so much. I bought these locally. I don't know what these are specifically called, but I can highly recommend something like this. I always have these by my sewing machine and they cut so well. Okay, so let's take this out and let's put in another paper. This is a paper from a sticker sheet. Because I don't want to glue this onto my back, my inside cover, of course. leave that paper in until that dries on this side here I'd like to have a flip out remember we had this piece here which I actually tried folding in half to make it into a journal page but as you might remember it tore so instead we can use these papers because they are quite sturdy we can use one as a flip out here and the question is, how do we connect it? Either fabric or lace. So since I have the lace here, should we try that? Just want to cut it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, why not do that? Or we could also have it on the inside, like that. What do we like better? No, I think I want it on the outside. 
So let's add some glue to the edge here. We can either glue this side of the lace on this page here, or we could glue it around the edge. There's so many options. Too many decisions for me right now. <laughs> it really doesn't seem to matter at all. Okay, I'll glue it onto this first page. And I should have put the glue on the paper because that would make it so much easier to spread. Oh well. And now, of course, it's all over my paper. I really like having these flips made out of either fabric or lace seems to work as well because they are so easy to flip. You know, I used to do this with paper and it just doesn't flip as nicely. So then we need a focal point here, especially because this is our first page. How about this lady? she can stick out but of course then we need to do something with the back side of the paper well, the first thing we're going to do is ink up all the edges which also serves as a moment to think about what to do how does Gail always say it ink and think so true. Do you do that as well? <laughs> then I think I also want a button and lace maybe here, but I think first I should decide on what to put on the background here. Something modern would be good because at the moment this is very vintage. So maybe another one of my stamps. Oh, maybe this one. I really like this one. So this is the set Mini Media Marks CMS 364. Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. And let's pick a nice color. I'm really loving this crackling campfire. To me, this color looks so much like a vintage red, like the red they would have used for the wax seals, for example. So it needs to be on this right side. How gorgeous is this? I love it. So if we glue it on like this, we'll see this beautiful flower here. Then we need a different button because we have one here. I also have these here. Mm -hmm. These would be small enough. Yep, let's cut one off. Maybe this piece. No. Oh, but maybe this will go here. Mm -hmm, I like that there. I think I coffee dyed this one. Okay, we need a piece of lace for there. Should we go with a color? Should we do pink? 
no not feeling that i think i want to keep it white or off white what else do we have this is such a gorgeous very very vintage one Then I have some threads here. Just want a little bit. No, I think this needs some contrasting thread instead. Mm -hmm. I like that better. So again, I think I need to sew this on. Should we sew it right through the card? Yeah, let's add a little bit of glue to the lace. And let's add our the red. And I'll maybe add a little bit of glue to the button as well. And I'll again go in from the front just because I don't think I want them hanging down from here. But I will keep the ends short this time because I have them long here and I think that would be too much if I have it on both pages. Again, I'll just go around it once. I should have waited for the glue to dry, obviously. <laughs> obviously, I have zero patience, so I'll make a double knot. So let's make these short this time. So there's the front and I just realized I forgot. No, I didn't. Oh my goodness. I thought I forgot to ink up the edges. So good job, Barbara. So this is the back side. So this can go here, but I think I need some more lace to take the same piece. I want it sticking out enough so I can see the flower, obviously. So I don't want to go further in than that. Or we could make this into a pocket, actually. A very narrow pocket. Oh, I like that idea. And we could make a notch in here so that we can grab whatever's in there a little better. So let's use a little circle punch. Make an indent in the middle. Ink that up and then I need to make a mark where I could glue it so I want it like this so my edge is here and here so I can add glue here and here on the edges I think we can take this out and we can put this in although here i still need to do something on the back as well how about we put a real vintage ticket into this pocket i think this color combination is wonderful so let's take two of these yeah they are perfect so for the back of this, I mean, one solution would be to just back it with a second card. That would be the easiest. That would also give us some writing space. Actually, let's just do that. I we'll just need to cut these, this one down a little bit. It's not always necessary to overcomplicate things. <laughs> Just stick two cards together.
if you use our glitter glue you obviously know this but if you're new to our glitter glue it's important to always close the glue when you're not using it even if it's just two minutes because it dries really really quickly which is a great feature but you have to treat it right okay so we have this yay <laughs> I might have to add something else to that but for now that's good i might add you know little details to everything later on but i just want to kind of get this going so let's do something here i'm going to add this image here we can decide if we want it peeking out i kind of like when a little bit peeks out because that piques your interest and also lets you know that this is actually something to flip out so i think i'll put her down here meaning we have lots of space here and we could maybe add another fun stamp here to incorporate more of the modern elements and going back to the same stamp set i think i'll go with this one here Yeah, that's really going to help a lot if I put it on like this. <laughs> and I'll use picked raspberry. A shocking pink. And I'll even spritz a little bit of water to give it more of a watercolor effect. Okay, where do we want this exactly? And do we want it? Yes, I think we want it peeking out. Yeah, so let's put it here. Oh, I forgot to, oh no. <laughs> Let me see if I can still add my writing board. Okay. Okay, this has moved. Oh dear, it's still okay, sort of. <laughs> Shoot. Okay, let me quickly dry that off camera with my heat gun. So definitely nailed the watercolor look. <laughs> and it's, it's not so bad here, but you see that it's kind of moved here a little bit. So we could just put the image over that part. No problem. Yep. And here we could maybe add some of this pale pink lace. Oops, <laughs> didn't mean to tear that. <laughs> okay, I need some more lace here. Oh, maybe some of that. That's not lace, that's tulle, right? It's very soft though. Let's try that. Okay, let's do that. Let's glue our card down. And this will, of course, also peek out from under here, which works well. I just found this little paper clip, which I think I've been hoarding for years. <laughs> I also have this one, which is even smaller. I think this is the project to use these in because I like it there. Should I have put that in before I glued it down? Absolutely. <laughs> But will I make this work anyway? Absolutely. <laughs> Is it straight? Absolutely not. <laughs> Do I care? Not really. <laughs> I will probably add something here as well. But for now, I'd like to move on to this very large empty space. <laughs> So I think on one of these, I want to make a belly band using the same lace that I used for the pocket in front. That would be gorgeous, wouldn't it? 
and I want it sticking out on the top and the bottom a little bit. Let's tatter these edges. And I'm wondering if it would look cool if I would just tear out one row of these buttons, maybe these larger ones, and then glue that strip on top. I really don't know. I guess I won't know until I try. I actually think I like the lace better without it, but I will keep this for another page because I think it looks really cool. So let's keep the lace as it is. Or what if we add one of these cards on top? Do we like that? Let's add some stamping to this. For example, oh, maybe just these X's. I'll take the crackling campfire again. And up here as well. Let's ink up those edges as well. I think it needs a little more definition, so I'm going to stitch around this with my sewing machine. Okay, that's better. But I'm still hesitant to glue it on for some reason. Maybe it should just go inside. See, these are the moments where I wish you were here with me, actually, so you could tell me. I think it's too much. I don't know. At the same time, putting this in here, it seems like it's too small. Okay, so what we are doing is... I'll just glue the lace on. I will ponder some more about this one, but I know I definitely want to add this. And maybe one way to do that would be to add it as another place to tuck something in. For example, we could put it like this. We have the button sticking out and then we could stick something in here. But the background is too plain. And we could add a modern element such as this here. This is fabric by Seth Apter. Definitely adds the modern feeling. Let's not think about it too much. Let's just do it. So this is one I will need to glue down by brushing glue on. So I'll take my textile glue. <laughs> this has become so heavy. There are so many layers of dried glued in here. adding a tiny bit of water and then I'll put this on the whole page
better to start from one end because this obviously sticks immediately. So let's make sure it's in the right position and then we work our way down. Now we can touch up some of the parts here that need additional glue. Okay, let's put the brush in the water so it doesn't dry. So let's check our button tuck spot. Or actually, it'll be more like a little belly band. And maybe we'll add some lace underneath that. So either this off-white one, which is quite wide. Let's go with that. I like it. So let's glue this on. Oh no! <laughs> Barbara, how is this going to become a belly band or a tuck spot if you glue all of it down? Oh no! What am I doing? No, 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 this is not what I want. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, I'll use some kitchen towel because I don't want to get my rag all gluey. Let me dry this with my heat gun. So as I was drying this now, I decided actually the better option would be to cut off a piece. This is the sticker paper, which would make so much more sense. Let's see how much it should stick out like that. So if I put a piece of this underneath, we won't see that anyway, and it will actually make it easier to stick something in. You know, because then it can't get caught on the lace. So let's cut a strip of this. Let's see if this will stick. Mm -hmm. That should work. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> We're just adding glue here and here is it wide enough oh but you know <laughs> now it's getting caught on this edge what bad idea okay we're taking this off again and we'll again dry this <laughs> It is still the tiniest bit sticky, which might go away if it completely cools off, but I could also use a piece of a candle and rub that on here. And that way we'll make sure that nothing sticks. Oh yeah. This is really nice and smooth now, so that should also help with moving things in and out. So let's try this one more time and maybe I'll make a little more room. Oh, look at that. Very good. I could put this image on this part here. Actually, I'll put it on this here, even though I'm covering this beautiful handwriting. Oh, I could actually attach it as a flip up. That way we can still see the handwriting. But I want to leave the back blank for some journaling. And I now decided I'm also going to leave this here blank because that also leaves a journaling space. Let's ink up this card. I don't know why I'm doing that actually. It's a vintage card. <laughs> no, let's not ink up that card. But let's ink up the back side of this. Although, obviously, since it's a flip up, we need to do something with the back as well.
Hmm, what do we put? Do we put another image? We could add this Paris one. We just have to put it in upside down. Let's do that. Keeping it simple. So let's not glue this the wrong way. Yeah, this way. I know you're hoping for another oh no moment, but this won't be it. <laughs> Let's ink up those edges as well. Let's find a piece of lace to adhere this with, uh, adhere this with, to attach it with. There we go. This is a cutoff piece. Let's do it. So that can go in here. Still not sure if I'm not going to add something here somewhere. And then let's figure out what we want to add in here. I think she was actually quite good because even if she's in here, we can still see her full head. And this is as far as I go today. I don't have more in me at the moment, it seems. We made a little bit of progress, not too much. We still have a lot to go. So let me know in the comments below, please, if you enjoy these kind of sessions, if you want me to do another one, or if you just want me to present you with the flip through of the finished project. Looking forward to hearing from you. Love you guys. Mwah! Mwah!